Good evening for everybody. On behalf of the Hungarian Paragliding Society, especially in the Flyway Club. So we continue our live meetings uh, serial with the most famous persons of the paragliding world. After uh, Paul Takács and Kriegel Maurer, today again we have a really extraordinary guest from Lebanon. Today our special guest, Ziad Basil, the most authentic blogger, most readable, Pester, whose words the paragliders word listen to, what you say. Yeah, that's true. So first of all, I would, yeah, that's true, that's true. Listen, they can do. So first of all, I would like to thank you. Uh, we really appreciate your your you accepting you. our invitation. Yeah, and it's a really great honor uh, to welcome uh, you here. So uh, I see the members already more, uh, almost 80 people are here. So a lot of Curious Hungarian pilots are waiting uh, for your words. So uh, I think you know we have a lot of plenty of questions, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But earlier I tried to selecting uh, due the limited time. Yeah, Even so, still remains much. But uh, I promise to you, I try to keep the the schedule and will be not more uh, sixty minutes. By the way, what's the time now uh, uh, in Lebanon? Eight o'clock. In Lebanon now it's eight o'clock. Yeah, eight. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's one one or different. Okay, so. Uh, my first uh, ordinary commerce question, uh, just a few words about how did your paragliding career begin? Okay, first of all, thank you very much for uh, having me with uh, this uh, Zoom meeting. I'm really honored, the honor is mine, and uh, thank you very much. So uh, to begin, uh, in the early 90s, I was driving uh, on the highway and I saw colorful gliders flying in the air. Uh, so it was my first time to see something like that. And since, uh, and since I, I saw them, I just uh, uh, drove immediately to the landing place. And uh, that was my first contact with the paragliders. Uh, so uh, there was, at the time, there was no paragliders in Lebanon and uh, my dream was to fly, and when I saw them, it was really a, a really nice uh, th thing to do, to, to see. And one French pilot stayed in Lebanon. Uh, his name is Laurent Ferrand, a French pilot at the time, and he taught me how to fly. And we were five to six pilots to, to begin this sport in Lebanon. Wow. Yeah, it was in the early 90s, or? Yeah, yeah, and uh, 93, I think, 92, 93, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. And, uh, by the way, you don't have uh, previously some kind of connection with the airplane or nothing, just... No, 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 I don't know anything. I just, uh, I was, I'm, I'm, in, I'm a windsurfer. I know <laughs> windsurfing ah. since my young age, uh -huh. and I, uh, I'm a person of the sea. <laughs> but when yeah. I saw the, the flying machines, yeah, it's good. Of, it's a good advantage. You know, you know uh, the wind already. Too, so I think it's okay. So and um, okay, uh, and then uh, you beat the pilot, and then then, but uh, but how did you find this kind of uh, the way of paragliding? I mean, the test flights compared to the wings, uh, yeah. and then uh, you write the comments. So how did how did you find? This, this, this okay. Kind of... um, okay, so I have to tell you that when the French uh, pilots uh, um, stayed here, he, uh, he taught me how to fly. And then I was super passionate about that sport. I really love that sport. And I bought quickly. I was maybe one of the persons, uh, I was only in Lebanon at the time. And I bought my first paraglider from France. And I think a bit, I was a bit misinformed. So he sent me, I think, the same glider that Julie Weissmeyer broke the, <laughs> the XC record in the desert of Nevada, it, 100 kilometers, the first 100 kilometers. So it was a performance paraglider. It has five risers per side, A, B, C, D, E, and then six line per side with 1.1 one, one, 1 millimeter lines. So uh, 
it was a difficult glider for me at the beginning, but as patient as I was, I was every day kiting the glider, playing with the glider on the ground and, and flying a little bit more and more and more. But in very strong conditions, I found it that to be really handful. It was my first experience since there is no one here, the Frenchman left. And I was alone just to see uh, how the glider behave. And sometimes in very strong conditions, I, uh, <laughs> it was really difficult for me. So later on, later on, I purchased maybe two, three months ago, uh, later, I mean <laughs> later, I purchased another glider, a really convenient glider for me. It was easier to handle. And that difference, that big difference, uh, flying a very performance paraglider and, and then flying another one very convenient, opened my eyes for that large gap. So changing wings began to to uh, you know to give me that nice feeling and that's where i immediately began to experience the difference between gliders uh huh so and then okay it was your first impression but then uh, uh, somehow you decided okay i i write what i feel what what was my impression so and i think first uh, not too much people can read your your comments about the wings and uh, but the last uh, I don't know 10, 20 years uh, you grow, 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 and now I have read your website. You fly more than three hundred, almost three hundred models. Yes, you're right. Uh, it, it's it's yeah. amazing. I can't imagine it. So it's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, Ziad, where can you testing the winds? Where where can you? Uh, where is the takeoff? The the what you you use usually, and what about the flying conditions? And uh, I mean, I mean, I just like to know what the condition and the average day. Of course, uh, in Lebanon we have uh, four winter sites. Uh, winter sites, I mean, it's lower at eight hundred uh, above sea level, from north to south. Uh, but not all Lebanon are flyable. Only the restricted areas in the in. A, uh, but the government uh, let us fly in it. And we have in summer adding uh, the cedars, it's 2,600 above sea level, the takeoff. The conditions, uh, the lower sites in autumn and winter have moderate conditions in this time. Uh, maybe three to four meters per second thermals and the winter and in autumn, they are really smooth sometimes, sometimes strong, but smooth. In mm -hmm. summer, it will be more turbulent as the uh, the sea breeze comes in to those uh, um, to those sides, and the, the 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 flying becomes more turbulent. Uh, however, in the cedars in the summer, it's really strong, but it's beautiful. It's really strong, but it's really beautiful. I mean, uh, you have you, you can have in August you can have more than nine meter per second thermals and uh, really small cores. It's not really big cores like in Europe because when I flew in Europe many times before, 10 years ago, when the, the, the thermal were really smooth, really big, you know, you, your value is getting maybe six, seven meter per second, but you, you don't get out of it. I don't know, maybe in France, but in Lebanon, it's very small cores but very strong and turbulent. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, the conditions uh, in August, like I said, uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so the, because these are the sites that I fly in, in, uh, in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I have seen in your videos the nice, gently smooth takeoff and the condition, uh, it's a nice cloud base and uh, so it, it the first sight it looks uh, it's a very very nice place and not so strong and and then so I yes. think the optimal uh, condition for uh, for the test, of course. Um, Peter, um, in the videos, of course, in the videos I only put the uh, the conditions that I do the test in, because in the stronger conditions or in turbulent conditions I cannot understand and the difference between gliders. Uh, yeah. I can understand the behavior of the glider, how, 
how the glider is uh, is behaving, how can I control the glider in corona conditions, but I cannot put it because it cannot uh, understand the difference between the two gliders when, when I'm flying side by side. So mainly, mainly in videos, uh, it's only in the, uh, in the smooth um, areas. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So sometimes, sometimes when I fly alone, I put the video alone, okay, in the cedars, and there are some videos that I fly in the other parts, but I cannot compare the gliders, but the yeah. difference would be huge. Yeah, yeah, this is my ne next question. So I suppose you have some company because uh, I mean friends or, or someone who can help you because uh, uh, if you want to compare the wings, uh, you need something. You need someone who help you uh, if yeah. you want to see what is it, what about the difference between the wings. So you have a, you have some, some company or your, your fixed friends who is coming with you to test the gliders. Uh, we have a very small community of pilots in uh, Lebanon. It's, uh, we, we are uh, 30 active pilots and we fly wow. very often together in the same sites, in the same small sites. So pilots in Lebanon, my friends are very helpful and in helping me, uh, they are very interested in helping me uh, making the test. For example, um, I have a friend now late, lately, my friend Eli, and say it, I will have to, to, to state all the names, but they really help me. They are really uh, passionate about that sport and they give me their time. So for example, I, I give my friend Eli uh, my reference glider for uh, the category B or C or D. And uh, on the same load, we, 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 <laughs> we stand on a scale before and then we, we put the same load on the gliders with the same size. And then uh, we do the comparison flights together side by side. Mm -hmm. And then we exchange the wings and I listen to his opinion. And I also let my other skilled friend give me their opinion. So it's like a sharing uh, situation here. And, but just because they are, we have small sites and uh, we know each other, um, each other skills very much. It's very easy to understand the small, uh, you know, difference in the gliders. Yeah, yeah, I understand exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, and usually, how many times do you fly with the with one wing before uh, when you comment before the comments that you 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 write. You see, that's, that's, that's really a very nice question. That's because, you know, when I, pilots all over the world um, asking me that question, but I, had, I will humbly say it, you know, I'm not really, it's really humble to say it, that a sommelier is a wine expert and he doesn't need to drink the whole bottle in order to give you his opinion. So people are prior to say, okay, you have to fly 100 hours or 50 hours, tell me your opinion. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I spent all my life kiting gliders. I know when, when, I, when I just pull the glider up, I understand what's, what's going on. Just five minutes, 10 minutes. And later when I fly it, uh, probably I always buy two gliders and I fly three to seven hours in different conditions. Usually in the first 30 minutes, 75% is already known of the behavior of the glider, not for the performance. The performance part needs somebody next to me with the reference glider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the feeling, the feeling under it, it's, it's really easy to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a not question. It, it's a question, but I want to say you are the most authentic pilot, and the uh, the people are trust uh, uh, in your opinions. I mean, many of them waiting the test results and your comments before the purchase. I mean, I mean, uh, before when the pilot choice the wing, first of all they are waiting for your comments, and it's a big responsibility and. Uh, have you ever made a big mistake? How you feel? <laughs> it's a, be uh, honestly. It's a, be hon uh, yeah, sure, sure. No, no, no. Look, look. It's a big responsibility, of course. And 
Well, doing it for fun and doing it out of passion uh, is the only way to keep you away from mistakes because if you're happy, you're happy. If you're not happy, you're not happy. That's it. You're not, uh, nobody is pushing you. Nobody, don't have stress. It's like, I'm free. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm just, I bought the glider and have the glider. If I land and I'm happy, and if I'm, <laughs> all my friends just look at me immediately when I land. That's, that's, that's really true. They just, when, when I land, they come and look at me. And you see, if, if, I, if I'm smiling, I mean, it's, it's good. So uh, uh, that's why I, I only yeah. write when I'm certain about my test. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I would have to say that my comparison chart will always be updated just a little if needed, because sometimes you, you um, of course, the conditions changes a bit. And uh, maybe if I fly in winter and test fly a glider in summer, I cannot know the conditions in summer, but Usually when I fly it in the lee side, uh, in not really nice conditions, I know the behavior of the glider. I know the pitch control. I know how fast it goes and how fast or if it's strong enough. But usually in the summer, when I fly in the cedars and the difference in altitude, you know that in difference in altitude, uh, everything changes. When you fly at 1,000 meters, uh, the same glider at the same load, uh, all this change when you fly at 2,000 meters at the same load, the same glider. Mm -hmm. Everything is different. So yeah. sometimes, yeah, I fine-tune the C comparison after a few flights, but usually it's really small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, as, as, as you know, I am selling different kinds of brands in Hungary. And uh, I know, at least personally, uh, at least a dozen of pilots who waited before the 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 before when they buy the wings before uh, your comments. The the wings were uh, was already in the market that but the people are wait 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 what the the say because it's uh, it's very auto retave uh, uh, your 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 opinion and uh, yeah but I am almost sure uh, you have met already not bad but uh, not really nice or dangerous thing I mean uh, dangerous wing how you comment this if you met some some not so nice glider. Look, um, I'm really uh, direct when I test fly the wing. Uh, in the early days, yes, in the early days, you know, yeah, Peter, you're a pilot, you're very uh, older than me, you fly gliders. I mean, in the early days, there were some weird acting wings. I mean, wings that uh, spin a lot. I mean, wings that uh, frontal collapse a lot, but uh, but in the last 10 years, I mean, the last 10 years, Glider has evolved um, toward, toward a much safer use and much more, less bad wings. And now uh, all I can find is a wing that, uh, the problem is that I can find maybe a wing that if you fly it at a certain load, uh, the, wind, uh, the wing cannot really uh, enter the air mass. You 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 found that you're you're not you're you're ho you're someone but is holding you from the back. This is the feeling, and probably that glider will be not so good. I mean, if you fly a glider, a big glider, for example, okay, and you find yourself like in the if you're loaded on that glider, if you if that glider goes to 95 max, and you're flying it at 94 or 95. And you find that in the in the moving air, it bumps in the it bumps ahead and not really just goes forward. Doesn't really smooth into the uh, slide into the air. So I mean that glider. I should say it like it is. I mean it it has um, those characteristics. But to say that there is um, dangerous gliders these days, it's I don't think it is. There, there is no 
such thing no i didn't find anyway uh-huh uh-huh yeah, no, no dangerous gliders. Yeah, it's, yeah, unless but, you're flying maybe a CCC glider, I don't know. But uh, I'm, I'm seeing, uh, I'm telling only about the certified available gliders. Yeah, but you never test the collapses and, and uh, the, the yeah. you tested yes. also? Yes, yes. And uh, I mean, um, yes, 10 days ago, 10 years ago, I mean, when, when, when you do the asymmetric collapse, uh, Sometimes the gliders really goes into the dive, but I know maybe I'm not an engineer. So I'm always say that experience only, I'm just talking about experience. I mean, in the early days, uh, gliders would really uh, dive forward maybe, or when you do a frontal collapse, it will give you uh, maybe, a, I don't know, a, a bad, uh, bad collapse but these days it's very difficult to have on a big glider uh, even on a sea glider but not all the sea gliders yeah yeah it's very difficult to have bad collapses mm -hmm. yeah by the way uh uh i have read on your website too but uh, you say too uh, you never say bats too much bats about the wings or just how can i say very gently it's that's because it is <laughs> yeah yeah uh -huh. so <laughs> or uh, we should we should we should read behind the lines what you mean i mean <laughs> you know what i'm talking about so you yes. you say very gently but uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah i mean uh, look, you never uh, you, yes you never never how can I say? Never say it's a it's a bad or something. Oh, all gliders, it's a, it seems like a very very good. All of them has a really more positive skills and 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 then so so the people can't read too much negative about the wings. Um, look, Peter. Uh, the, honestly, I don't find really uh, negative points about the wing. I mean. Ne negative means that if you're flying and you uh, you're flying like this and you're controlling the wing and then you suddenly you get a huge collapse. I mean, one time, two times, you should say it like it is. I mean, you should write it. But uh, these days, I mean, I never experienced it. Never experienced such such gliders. But uh, in the comments, I I only write what is. Uh, what, I've, what I have experienced in the gliders. Uh, and of course, manufacturers are doing their best to produce nice gliders. But uh, I, mean, I mean, if you read the tests, everything is really uh, clear in the, in the tests. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, sometimes the glider doesn't really turn inside the thermals, uh, for example. Uh, uh, for example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there, was a, there was a glider in the C category that I test flew uh, four months ago. And that glider, I mean, I was a bit disappointed about the handling of that glider, knowing that uh, the older version had really nice handling and it was really an extension to the pilot and you move two centimeters it flies and i love that glider so the new one has had more performance had more speed had more ability to to fly better abilities the handling was really bad i mean uh -huh. i couldn't fly that glider into a thermal yeah it, i it... opened the chest strap and everything and i wrote it like it is there is no bad gliders rather than a bit uh difficult to steer or uh difficult to climb sometimes in the in weak conditions sometimes uh not good in gliding headwind glides but just to say bad about the glider it's it's difficult because there's no bad gliders yeah yeah that's true but it's it's, it's really interesting because uh it, it it can happen it's quite often the last time when uh, the man, one manufacturer uh, get the new model and uh, the the new model it's a little bit worse than the previous model yes 
perhaps the, the performance it's it's better or yeah perhaps it's better but the for example the handling uh it's perhaps not yeah it's it, it can happen it's quite quite often in the last time yes this is my personally impression to personal experience too yeah that's uh, that's, Peter, that's true i have that's to true. i have to add something very important uh, you know when a glider has been made uh sometimes the manufacturers do their best to to produce a certain glider but pilots expect that that glider must be changed after two years so sometimes pilots do not buy a two-year-old glider and that's the problem because sometimes that it's a really nice glider and that glider like a xeno the xeno from ozone maybe it's a d glider until now it's really a nice glider to fly i mean okay you can find another one like it like it but you cannot say i don't want to buy the xeno i'm just waiting to see the other one probably the other one won't be good probably the other one will be better we don't know of course there is a lot of bees like that and there are a lot of uh, c gliders like that so it's not really a matter of time that a pilot uh, say that I will not buy that glider. And that's really a pressure to the manufacturer because manufacturer will say, okay, after two years, I will not sell anymore and I have to produce another glider. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who will tell us that that glider will be as good? For example, now in the competition and the PWC, uh, the Enzo 3 is winning competitions, but the, but the Enzo 3 uh, has two, three years, I don't know, yeah, four. It's, it's not a new glider, but it, yeah. still, have, it still have its, uh, its performance. Good that's, performance uh, yeah. that's the thing. So yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. pilots should a little bit uh, concentrate on the, if you're happy on the rear wing, if you really like that wing, and if you're really confident about that wing, keep that wing. Don't buy any new wings just because you want to buy it. Yeah, I, I it's a thank you because it's a, it's a really good opinion because I hope a lot of people can hear you. It's very very important what you you told now. Uh, just a little bit return to the manufacturers. And the manufacturers, how trust in your opinion? It has already happened that uh, when you told to the manufacturing something about the wings and uh, they changed something based on your opinion or, you know what I mean? Uh, so you you had a suggestion, it could have been better if the break or something, it happened already? No, 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 no look, um, I mean, uh, there is no direct discussion between me and manufacturers because uh, I only purchase uh, certified uh, wings and I don't develop wings with the manufacturer. I don't have that relation with them. And I prefer uh, for, the time mo for the time being that I'm happy uh, flying the, the certified wings that are released to the market. So the glider is finished, is released to the market, but luckily, of maybe 80% of manufacturers are sending the glider, are selling me their, their gliders. So I'm, yeah, I, uh, and that's, uh, that's, the, that's the way I can fly it and I take, I'm, I give my opinion about it. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I can do. But possible that uh, they read the test and uh, some maybe uh, will change the wing, maybe, I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. ask. Maybe one, two years later, I don't know. Maybe no. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's just, it, my, my, my small opinion is just the one opinion, but uh, mm -hmm. that's it. No, that's it's very important, of course. But uh, as I uh, have read uh, in your uh, website, you have a praxis, almost 300 uh, wings. It's It's a lot of, I don't think, uh, I don't think so. Anybody in the in the paragliding world has the same experience about the wings as, as your experience. Uh, I don't think so. By the way, uh, I mean, uh, you believe in the different characteristics. I mean, the the 
you re you can recognize the typical signals of the brands if you test the ozone or gene or BGD or whatever. So yes, 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 you're right. Uh, you see, before the computer simulation arrived, you know, uh, many many years ago, designers had their own signature. I mean, I, I could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it uh, it happened to me one time or more time that. If you give me one glider and just kite it and close my eyes, I will know that this is uh, that designer and that designer, you know, it's sometimes like Nova, you know, used to, Hampapesh was at Nova and I really recognize Nova handling at the time. But today, I mean, today it's a bit different. I couldn't do it because uh, the, the, uh, there is more so sophisticated computers and technology, it becomes a bit more difficult. And um, of course, also when in the same brand, the designer changes, everything changes. I mean, if you, if you, I, I believe if you, if you, if there is a brand, example X brand, and uh, you have a designer um, doing wings in that uh, company for 10 years, the gliders are a little bit the same, but of course more better. But you know they have the same signature as you as you said. But when you did, when you change the designer, everything changes. Of course, it stays the 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 control is good, the nice uh, construction and everything. But I think uh, the uh, the overall feel and yeah. yeah. So yeah, is changed. Yeah, yeah, I understand exactly. Uh, you are talking the right things, absolutely, because now uh, you the latest IT technology, uh, uh, the produce technology in the last years, the wings are regardless the the manufacturers. It's 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 very similar. I'm talking about the same category, but uh, it's I think it's not so easy for you. Uh, how can you find the difference? between the small details, you know, because uh, more or less the, the company has used the same uh, designer programs, designer IT, and which those are, I mean, the, 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 the small difference, what you, you try to listen to your attention. I understand, yes. The gliders are beginning to be very close, as you said, and I always say that any good bee, any good bee will get you the best XC adventure. Uh, but there is, um, the differences are small, but available in handling, comfort, maneuverability, safety, if pleasure to fly, and a little bit performance, performance of course. Uh, <laughs> but there is something also uh, different because when you do a glider, when you create a glider, uh, there are lots of things to consider. Sometimes the same glider reacts differently in different sizes. If you get, for example, a big glider, a big glider size 75, 95, and I fly that glider at the same load. Let's say I fly that glider at 92, 93, and I do my test and I found that the optimum weight is 92. So uh, flying that glider in all conditions, uh, probably is a good glider. Let's say it's a good glider, it handles perfectly, flies great, enter the air mass really gently. I love that glider, so I write everything as it is. Now the same glider, let's take the same glider, and sometimes I take uh, the other size. Let's speak with size S now, that uh, goes from 70, five or 70 to 85 and I fly that glider at 84 because I can I have uh, two harnesses or three harnesses and I fly with a light harness because my weight is 70 so uh, I can fly the size s and sometimes it happened that that size that size s has that's a different uh, everything is different between the, the same size, the same model and the other size. So the S is completely different from the 
bigger size, a little bit MS also, not a large size. And also there is a difference between M and L, but I cannot test fly the L side that goes uh, 210 because I cannot uh, take a ballast. But let's talk about the 85 glider. What's the difference in 85 gliders? That's the most important. Some pilots will say, but I fly that glider and it's written that this glider flies well and handles well and goes, mm, but I flew it and I didn't experience it. You fly the S size and the S size, sometimes manufacturers will certify that small size, it doesn't pass its certification. So they need to fine tune it. They need to change things uh, maybe lines, maybe I don't know what. And that glider behaves differently from the other sides. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the thing that you must know. So when you when I make a test of one size, it doesn't mean that the other size has the same uh, feel or the same handling. And it happened to me on one glider that the other one was really nice perfect glider in the air it's like magic but the smaller size was really bad really really bad i mean i didn't like it i didn't like it at all it doesn't really enter the air mass it's like a different glider yeah yeah it's sometimes it's, it's quite quite usually the the same same model and the smaller size it's uh, the performance less but more dangerous yeah <laughs> It's sometimes no, 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 it's... not no. sorry, sorry, Peter. It's not, not. Yeah, of course, this, the the smaller size a little bit more dynamic. They handles uh, faster, but I meant that that size differ from the other size, just from the efficiency in the air, because I always fly two sizes, and they practically are the same. Are really good. The small and the MS flies really well, but that model. I was talking about the S size was completely different and it bumps into the air. So it was different from the other size. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, Ziad, if I'm right, you have a different kind of harnesses too. What you yeah, that, that, yeah those, those harnesses differ in roll movement. Okay, so I mean, it doesn't involve the pitch. The pitch stay the same. If you change many harnesses, the pitch is the same. The roll movements differ. That's it. Mm -hmm. What what you prefer? Which 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 harness? I saw in the pictures you fly now with the Impress Four, but uh, but uh, what you prefer uh, for the testing? Okay, okay. look, um, this is only a personal opinion. Of course, it doesn't involve anything, and uh, it's a personal matter. I mean, if I want to uh, test fly wings. I always choose a harness with a seat board, not without a seatless board. Yeah. Of course, seatless board are more comfortable. You just sit, you're relaxing, you're, you don't have a pressure point. But I found out that if I want to fly a glider and, and understand and listen to every movement, I need a pressure point, a little bit pressure point. Now, seat harnesses, are very well made that you can sit really comfortably with having a pressure point in your uh, thighs, in your hips, that you can, you know, sense every movement of the glider. That happens, and then you can you can counter steer in your harness. That's mm -hmm. very important. So a seat board, a seat harness, I choose a seat harness always uh, in my tests. Now I have a, an old X-rated six that I change this is my third one, and uh, it is light, it's good, it has nice control roll. I keep it uh, as a reference all the time, and I chose now the um, the light one from Jin, uh, the light, the light, the, the latest light three. It has a really nice uh, ABS configuration. It really rolls really nice. I mean, it has really nice uh, handling properties. I like it. So that's it. Mm -hmm. By the way, have you ever think about uh, you will uh, uh, testing and comment uh, the harnesses too? Yes, but the harnesses, I always, yeah, I made the, a lot of uh, testing harnesses. But harnesses, I have to say it, 
is are very very difficult to test because all our uh, physical are uh, different because maybe i have long legs maybe uh, uh, another uh, pilots have uh, higher hips so and uh, maybe my arms are uh, you know everything changes in the harness harness are very personal may uh, when i test fly harnesses uh, this is an experience i mean i fly a harness i like that harness i give that harness to my friend and uh, and my friend who i know to 20 years for 20 years fly that harness he he, he gets he landed he said ah it's not my harness i am i don't like it at all and, but i say it's good it has all of the, and it said yeah but it doesn't it doesn't it's not convenient to my body uh, uh, proportion so yeah, i mean yeah. uh, it's difficult to <laughs> To, to test fly harnesses, I have to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the harness, I mean, the constellation, the harness with the wing, it's uh, the harness is very, very important uh, if you, you, you fly. So exactly what you told, it's uh, how sensitive and what is the, what about the geometry? Yeah, it's very, 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 very uh, important point of the old testing, I, this is my, my opinion, by the way. Uh, so uh, my next question is, uh, what do you think, Ziad? The paragliding world, where where the paragliding world heading? Uh, you remember what uh, were E and B wings approximately 20 years ago? But now I guess this category it's completely different if we compare uh, uh, the wings uh, 20 years ago. So what do you think about it? Uh, yes, uh, yes, you're right. I mean, the paragliding has evolved in a really good way. 20 years ago, competition gliders uh, were difficult to master uh, with, with less overall performance than the day's bees. I mean, for the majority of pilots, I mean, it's personal also opinion. I mean, for majority of pilots, I don't think getting above a B or a C category is needed today for recreational or even for long XCs. And the categories above will have the edge, of course, for competition use, for speed, for record breaking. That's, of course, if anyone is aiming for it. But I think paragliding design is, um, is heading uh, for even easier to fly machines in the, in the B category, of course. And uh, we'll see about uh, the C uh, category if they want to allow the collapse line or not, I, we will see that later. Uh, and I think also that uh, probably the two liner design could be things that are uh, coming through in the future. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Ziad, what do you think uh, the tendency of the last, uh, last five, 10 years, uh, appeared in the market, the low B gliders and the high and B gliders. What do you think mm. about it? Um, well, actually, uh, um, actually, I mean, for uh, intermediate pilots and for intermediate pilots, I think the, the low B category is really interesting, really interesting. Uh, uh, because the manufacturers are beginning to put spices on a low B. A little bit spices. I mean spices. I mean the a little bit more feeling into them. Not all of them, but now. And you see the the low B of these days has really thin lines configurations, and some has the same lines used for a high B. Not all of them, but I mean, practically fifty percent, maybe. I don't know. I'm seeing the and the and like like we like we see and for security reasons. For uh, weekend pilots, for uh, you know, recreational pilots, people, pilots who will have who needs fun in their lives. I mean, low B gliders are really interesting. They have lots of performance, keep you safe, and gets you anywhere. And uh, really interesting to have to to fly them. Also, the difference is not really big. The difference will come. When you have, you know, when you have low in the valley breeze, getting through the valley breeze, of course, uh, that's, you need a thinner profile, faster profile, 
like you have the 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 the, the b the high b will be better this the high c will be better the d will be better and even the ccc will be better than all but un unless you're stuck in a really uh, difficult place and you need to get into their air mass low b gliders and high b gliders are really nice uh -huh. are the yeah, best but Yes, but uh, for example, uh, let I say uh, a few years ago, it appeared the uh, Gene Carrera, and the market yes. it appeared in the market, and it was a A and B, the high A and B glider. But uh, but a uh, lot of comments appeared of after. It's a it's a C glider, but uh, the PMA lobby made the the certification. What do you think about that? Yes, that's uh, that's um, also a, a thing to, to um, something to think about. I mean, it all depends on the aspect ratio, aspect ratio of the wing. Mostly, the aspect ratio projected is the most important. But let's talk generally about the aspect ratio, the real aspect ratio. I mean, we are not wizards. I mean, we are uh, humans and <laughs> engineer. And they are making superb gliders, really nice and safe gliders. But we don't have to uh, to disregard the aspect ratio of a wing. If a wing is six aspect ratio today, I mean yeah. it's it has it couldn't be uh, it couldn't be delivered uh, for um, an intermediate to low, low hours pilot. I mean yes, I flew the Carrera and I flew lots of uh, big gliders with six. And there is now a big glider with 6.3 aspect ratio. I mean, okay, so people, if I want the pilots to uh, to be safe, I mean, they will look at the aspect ratio of their glider. Don't look at the B. Uh, okay, you can, you want a B? Okay, get a B. But don't say that I want to get a B because I have 50 hours per year, but I will get a 6.3 aspect ratio B. You're getting a C. That's... yeah. Uh, of course, um, there is marketing and big companies, big companies also must move forward, must sell gliders. But they are honest also. They, is, they are telling you and, and their website, it's a high B glider. And if you read what is a high B glider do, I mean, it's an intermediate now. Uh, in the old days, it's, uh, we call it, uh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the old certification, um, the HB2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the HB2, uh, I mean, is an intermediate. It's not, it's not a the HB12. And yeah. the HB12, maybe, yeah, so it's different. Yeah, but, but there, is a, there is also, I mean, um, the, there is a um, certification uh, thermic magazine, I mean, some serious people are really uh, doing a very good job by by saying uh, B B uh, minus and B medium and B plus for the pilots. Yeah, I mean, I have to read it. I I I, I forgot uh, where I where I read it. Yeah, but it is my personal opinion. It's quite uh, recognizable uh, the difference between the low and the high A and B glider. The question is the, the manufacturer uh, uh, recommended whom this this wings because the low B glider it's uh, under thirty uh, hours per year. The high end B gliders more than thirty yes. till fifty or something. Yeah, that is a question, by the way. So. Uh, Ziad, and the, uh, do you think the official test evidences as and DHV or whatever, or Air Turkeys or whatever, so are uh, fair and authentic and independence? So, <laughs> yeah, it's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> Look, our sport is very small and there are lots of positive people trying to do their best in that sport, really. And others trying to do their business, of course. I think the testing, uh, the test bodies done over water uh, are really serious, are really interesting. And uh, they give an idea about how the glider is behaving uh, after a collapse in calm air. 
uh, and the test flying bodies, uh, which I immensely respect, are doing their best. And it's beautiful to have uh, an idea. But um, of course, you pilots, all the pilots, the new one, the old ones, knows that in the air, it's not calm when you get a collapse. The glider is not here and you're not doing a collapse. Sometimes the glider is here in front of you and it gets collapsed. So I think collapses in real conditions differ a bit. You, you, uh, and, uh, and also we have uh, the element of surprise because when you want to collapse a glider, of course you're staying here. And I am saying they're doing an amazing job. I really respect them and I'm really thankful. But in conditions, in moving conditions, the glider behaves a bit different. That's why it's safer uh, to trust your own abilities for a certain glider uh, rather than reading a result on a piece of paper. But of course, a piece of paper is a good thing to know. But also, each pilot knows himself better. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's uh, slowly the time is coming to close but no problem, i have no problem no problem i, I have, have <laughs> i have two more questions only so it's the first one it's a perhaps it's you can't not answering but do you have a favorite favorite brand uh, uh no no you i don't can, have you a can, favorite brand you can say the name but that's not, that's not problem if you have a favorite brand, it's not look, look i yes i have a favorite i have a favorite feel for a glider. That's very important for me. You know why I do the flights? I do the flights to, to appreciate the feeling under a certain glider. I mean, I'm just like anyone, any pilot of the world and who is just looking for a new glider that will come out. If, uh, if many of you are waiting for, for example, a um, uh, certain glider that will come out, a B or C, I am exactly at the same passion as you. I'm looking forward to, to fly that glider, to know uh, what that glider can give me. And I'm excited like a little kid. And that's why I don't favor any brand because as I said before, uh, uh, the, uh, the, new, the new gliders could surprise me uh, by the, the good qualities and others uh, could surprise me less. So uh, I don't have a different uh, favorite brand. I, I respect them all. Uh, many, many companies uh, are doing a very good job. Some companies, uh, you didn't ask, but there is some companies that don't really like to sell me gliders. I also respect them. And I know that they have, uh, uh, a company to a business, uh, I don't know, you know, but uh, I get all the gliders and I, I write what I, what I feel under them. If you go to fly, but not test fly, just, just for fun, yes. uh, which class you prefer, B, C or D? If, if you okay. have a time, <laughs> because you fly always... Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely right. You know, I mean, um, okay, I will say it to you, but I won't, don't want that the pilots who are hearing me to do the same. Just why? I will tell you why. Because that's, that's the same if you are going, you're alone or you're <laughs> with somebody else that you favor and you're opening a bottle of wine. What bottle of wine will you open? Do will you open a, a, a one euro bottle of wine? Or will you open the, the best bottle of wine you are tasting? So what class of glider? I mean, I like, I like the gliders that really flies through the air. If I have a, a two liner, a nice two liner, I'll get it. If I have a three liner, but really a good three liner, D category, C category, I, I will get it. No worries. 
but I like the, the, the best glider that gives me a smile, that gives me happiness when I'm flying, pleasure in flying it, not really performance. I don't care about performance. But manufacturer said, okay, he's focusing about performance. I don't want to sell him wings because if he flies and he finds that that wing is better than that wing, ah, I will not sell. <laughs> yeah. What's the problem? I mean, I'm not only talking about performance. It's really that if you're happy with that glider or not. So I yeah. take the glider that makes me uh, feel good. If you have performance and you cannot fly that glider for more over than three to four hours and get tired, so what's and the uh, what's the issue? You uh, you fly the CCC class as well? Uh, not in the past five years, no. Before I had lots of competition gliders. The days that maybe yours, Nova, I had. Yeah, I had lots of competition wings and uh, they were really difficult to fly. And uh, they were called uh, the HV3 at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the HV3, uh, Triple X, uh, XMX. Uh, XMX, uh, yeah, from Airwave. Yeah, I had the Adel Z, Adel, uh, Adel had uh, two Sector. competition wings. Yeah. Sector, sector, sector TX, yeah, sector and sector TX. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that was really <laughs> moments. Yeah. But now today, no, I'm um, I'm getting older a bit and uh, no hair, you know, like I told you. Yeah. So it's better to be uh, to be a bit uh, comfortable on a glider, to be happy on a glider. Too much uh, working uh, makes me uh, tired. So I like, um, you know, the, the lower classes. D classes are good enough for me. And Zia, do you think now the D class with the two liners D class as the yes. peak Syria or the Jean Leopard or Zeno, uh, the D class, not the CCC D class is more safer as previews or what do you think about that? Well, um, uh, the D-Class with two-liner technology, uh, well, when the Zeno appeared, when the first Zeno appeared, it's a really nice glider. I mean, uh, everybody knows it now and everybody flies it and it's a superb glider to fly. And uh, the Peak 4 also was really a nice glider to fly and easy to glide. To fly. Of course, designers will always push the limit. Paul push the limit of the performance and push the limit of the safety. That's normal. That's normal. But I think that uh, one day probably, one day probably they will be, uh, they will reach a certain, uh, uh, certain level of safety much better than today on a two liner. I mean, two liners, I mean, I trust three liners today. Honestly, I trust three liners today uh, and some two liners, a little bit, maybe one or two design that I flew. I, I felt really homogeneous and good. But uh, maybe the question to ask is, uh, what will you do if a two liner collapse on you? That's the problem, not yeah. really. A, so I can fly the two liner all the time, but do I ask myself, do, can I, can I uh, manage a big collapse of a two-liner if I'm on slow? That's that's the uh, challenge for me. Yeah, it's absolutely right. I I, I feel myself absolutely the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ziad, uh, I finished my questions from my side, but in the chat we have few questions. Just few minutes, please. Uh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, yeah, of course. So, uh, in the chat we have a. a Two question. One question is uh, from Otto. Uh, approximately how many flying goals do you have in totally? Um, <laughs> usually, yes. Uh, when I began to fly, uh, I used to to write all the uh, all the flights. Maybe, but ten years ago, uh, I stopped at five thousand hours. Uh, yeah, ten years ago, I think. Because I fly all day. I mean, I I used to fly. I used to kite the gliders. I was a mad person. But yeah, I, I don't know now. But, uh, 
I'm counting. I think it's <laughs> thousands and thousands. Okay, so the next next question is from our guest. Hi, Ziad. How often, I'm sorry, I can't read exactly. Okay, how often do manufacturers try to test your integrity and imper impartiality? Impartiality, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, without <laughs> maintain such a neutral and professional picture of Ziad brand. That yeah. is a question. <laughs> You can, okay, uh, look, uh, when I test fly a glider and that glider uh, doesn't meet their expectations, uh, first, they say that I don't know how to test fly gliders. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> when a glider is good, they will share it on the, the same manufacturer. I mean, the same manufacturer. When, it, when, when, I, when I write that a glider is good, they will share it on the social media and in their website. What can I say? That's business. Uh -huh. I do yeah. whatever I, I feel like and I'm, I'm, I'm free. I'm, that's it. Mm -hmm. And another question is, what glider to buy in 2021 from B and C? Ah. <laughs> the good. What glider to buy in 2021 from B and C? This is a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, look, the, all the B gliders are really nice. I mean, it depends on you. What really do you expect from that glider? I made a, a, a C comparison and a B comparison for to say that if you are toward the handling of a glider, you should know that that glider handles better a bit than that one. You should always consider the uh, the uh, the loading. I mean, lots of people uh, get uh, an 8100 glider, maybe an S glider, 8100, and fly it at 80. It will be totally different. So yeah. if the test is made at 95, you will get all the information at 95 because it will differ a lot if you fly it at 80 or 85. Mm -hmm. So what you glider to to uh, to uh, to get in 2021 for a B category, if you want performance, you have the Rush 5, you have the Rook 3, the new one, you have the Swift, if a performance, I mean, and you have lots of other Bs, but I'm telling you now, you have lots of Bs, you have the Mentor 6, and now if I don't uh, state all the, the good Bs, some manufacturers will be unhappy, but I'm just telling you small things to, to, for you. If you want uh, turning ability, I mean, turning ability, uh, I found it really nice uh, on the Mentor 6 Lite. It turns really well. And uh, on the Speed is are all the same, huh? very close. Uh, the top speed. If you push the bar uh, on the pulleys, you will maybe from the best to the to the lesser, you have two kilometers difference. So the problem is not really big. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's it. From if you want to choose a sea glider, it depends on your ability. If you can, if you if you if you can master a sea because sea are a also big category of speed. big range yes and, yes and if you if you like uh, really nice handling the best handling i ever found it's personal for me but it's also a d not a c it's a c glider but it behaves a bit like a, c, a d and in information i like the up trango x race handling if you fly that you understand what you can really go to level B because it has very nice communication. But in the C category, you have the Delta IV, the uh, the new Ikuma, uh, not Ikuma, the, the Arctic Six is really nice. You have the Alpina. You have lots of good Cs out there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Ziad, I'm sorry. Just really, really, really few questions oh, no. more. Please, please say whatever you want. I'm just here yeah. for the questions. Okay. I, uh, I will uh, say. 
we have a, uh, received the same uh, from the same person the uh, second part of his question. How many okay. hours is needed to fly on a paraglider to be able to give uh, an opinion about it, about the test? What 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 do you think about that? But I just uh, I just re replied to that question that I told you that uh, a wine taster is not you don't need to drink all the bottle you know to taste the wine. It just you take a bit and I. Like you said, I flew many gliders that I know quickly the, uh, the information it gives. I mean, three to four to five hours for me. But if you want, but I tell the pilots that they must, that they must uh, test fly by their own. And uh, five, six hours, I mean, seven hours. Yeah, that's it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. In different conditions, if the conditions allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Of course, a different condition. And uh, Zia, do you have any any opinion about the uh, ozone Geo six? Somebody asked Agnes. He he asked. Uh, I didn't. I, I'm sorry. I didn't flew it. I flew the uh, the Buzz Z six, and the Buzz Z six. I can tell you that it has. Uh, a little bit more comfort than the Buzz Z5. The Buzz Z5 had a little bit more spices. So the 6 uh, will give you more comfort, more uh, smoothness in flight. And the performance at bar, when you push the bar at the, at, the, at, the, at the max, you get more performance from the Z6. And it doesn't have uh, also a frontal collapses like the, the other one. Mm -hmm. no, it's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Another so question. The GO6 must be uh, the same, a little bit lighter. Yeah, yeah. This is the GO Syria, is the lighter Syria by Ozone, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ziad, uh, one more thing. Do you have any any experience about the, uh, the paramotor wings or not no. too much? No, no, no. no? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, because. Too much noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because somebody, somebody uh, asked, but. Uh, uh, yeah, so you don't have it at all. Uh, just a second. The last question is from our guest. I was the Cedars in September 2010, talking to two tandem pilots. Any chance it was you? You know, it's uh, the, the question of... Uh, uh, Gaspar. No, 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 not Gaspar. It's a qu uh, question of Guri, Guri, <laughs> Guriga. <laughs> Uh, Kerekes Laszlo, you know oh. him? He was in the Sedar in 2010, and he asked. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm Betty, I he's not Guriga. He's Gunga. 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 I'm sorry, yeah, I can't yeah. read by my eye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gunga, uh, what is if your? You change your glasses, uh, Betty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I can't read the the chat. Uh, so. The question is, he was in the Sedars in September in 2000, but I don't know just his nickname. Uh, yeah, Knoll, Knoll Gary, Knoll Gergay. You okay. remember him? And uh, look, um, I don't do tandems. I don't fly tandems yeah, okay. uh, commercially. I don't do commercial tandems, so I don't think it, it was me. No. Okay, and uh, yeah, from Gaspar wrote yes. The question: Can you give yeah. your general opinion, light versus or normal wings? Yeah, it's a good question. You I'm have sorry, some. Please? Yeah, uh, can you give your general opinion about the light and the, the normal wings? Because yes. some people are afraid uh, the the material and the quality is not the same. It's not so strong as the normal wings. Yes. And uh, is this my opinion? Is it not true? But let me let me hear you. Yes, yes. Uh, look, um, uh, this is a very interesting question also. Uh, I think the light materials are improving very well, are really good at improving. I mean, I, we, had, uh, we had a glider, a light gli an M6, an L light M6, an ozone LM6. And the guy here flew it 257 hours, I mean, he, because he logged all his flights. And we have a porosimeter here, and he tested it. The the light material stayed the same, the same. It's over 300. 
So it was amazing. I mean, maybe maybe there are some clothes that before uh, were getting uh, fast. Uh, 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 shit. <laughs> I don't remember that. Uh, deteriorating fast. But, uh, and I saw uh, quite a few light gliders uh, getting really uh, bad, uh, deteriorating fast. But I don't think the new, uh, the new uh, materials uh, are uh, not good. I mean, I, I think the light ones, it depends on the clothes, uh, are beginning to be better and better. And if you see now, all the new gliders uh, are using light materials, probably for uh, recovery after collapse or for, I don't know, maybe, yeah, probably for that. I mean, all the new gliders are getting uh, them less than five kilos, four, four, 4.5, and it's not the light version. It's not that uh, you get uh, a medium glider for three kilos. No, it's not for the x Alp. So for the XL, they can make it three kilos, but are they doing it a normal glider for four kilos? And they're using uh, some light clothes. So I think light clothes are uh, becoming better and better. And uh, one more thing, uh, they, they feel in the air a little bit better. Uh, before I test flew in 10 years ago, some light gliders that had uh, aggressive collapses. And, after that moment, after the, those years now, all the light materials are giving me softer collapses and more, uh, more uh, friendly user. I don't know why. Smoother, smoother, smoother feel under it. Yeah, because the canopy has a less weight and the less elan in after yes. different kind of maneuvers, of course. Uh, by the way, uh, my personal opinion too, in the last five years, completely disappeared the difference between the light and the normal material. I mean, I'm talking about the endurance of the, the material. It's absolutely yeah. the same. It is my somebody somebody uh, wrote in the chat, he has an Alpina 3 and he was flying more than 400 hours and still working. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's true. Uh, I promise to you, really just few questions more. <laughs> No, no, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. So somebody asked you, if is it not secret, it is a little bit personally, he asked, uh, what is your real job? Or do you test the gliders as a full-time job? No, 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 <laughs> no. I have a big company. I, uh, yeah, I have a big company 35 years ago. I began a food company in, in a food industry. I have, I have a lot of employees and uh, I do this for a hobby. So I'm, I'm doing it for a hobby, but okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much your your honestly answer because it was a little bit <laughs> privately. <laughs> no problem, so, no problem. That's, that's the truth, that's it. Somebody, uh, somebody still uh, asked, do you have any old gliders uh, what you will never sell? I mean the your favorite gliders, which is in the in the treasure. Uh, I never sell. Uh, uh, the problem is that when you change lots of gliders, and believe me, they are really nice gliders. And new gliders are coming, and uh, sometimes each two or three weeks uh, there is uh, one glider, new glider coming, and I cannot keep all the gliders and. Uh, uh, probably I need to keep only the reference gliders. I mean, if I like that glider, I keep it as reference, one in the B, one in the C, and one in the D. So now you will ask me, what is your reference in the B, in the C, <laughs> in the D? So in the B, I have reference, yes. I have uh, the Rook 3, the Rush 5. The Swift 5 is an excellent climber, the Rook, the Switch the, the Swift 5 is something exceptional in, in, in climbing. And in the sea, I, well, the, I have lots of good gliders, but I will keep the, probably the Delta 4 or the Arctic 6 uh, for gliding. But I don't mean 
I'm keeping it because they are, it's best than the other. No, I'm keeping it because it's a little bit more complete in all the characteristics. I mean, it's not only the gliding machine. No, I'm, I'm telling that because it turn well, it climbs well, it glides well, it handles well, it's safe, okay, for the B category. So I keep it as reference to remind my my head about that kind of feel for the next gliders to come. But all the other gliders can get you everywhere with lots of XCs. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Ziad, one more. Uh, somebody, somebody asked, uh, uh, the question is nowadays there are the XR things hitting the market. As the, yeah, as the general yeah. wings, especially the latest two liners in the D wings, like uh, Omega X Alp 3 or uh, Zeolite from the Ozone. Are they yeah. generally as safe as the three liners? What, what, what about the performance? Um, honestly, the performance of two liners are exceptional. I mean, the performance is exceptional. But to tell you that my personal opinion, unfortunately, no, I think the three liners are, for me, I feel better on a three liner today than a three liner because not just not of the feel, just because of the collapses that could happen after a collapse. That's it. The handling after a collapse, not the the flying. So, so yeah, I'm, I think the three liners today are are giving me a better uh, safety feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, it's personal huh? it's, it's personal i mean yeah 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 that, that, that's true by the way my personal opinion too yeah in the market already the omega x up three and the zeolite but uh so not so popular because the wings uh i think somewhere around three kilograms okay and um and uh but it's very the, the price it's very high and uh this kind of category in the market, it's, uh, how can I say, it's, it's in my opinion, it's not so popular because uh, the people are still still afraid about the about the, the material as we were talking about uh, previously. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, it is already, but but I don't think so. It's too much people are interesting about the, the new uh, Omega XRs. By the way, it's come the four, the XRs four. It's, uh, uh, our last guest was Krieger Maurer, and he say he told us it's come the the new XOPS three. We will see. Yeah. Okay. So no, we don't have believe or not, we don't have more questions yet. Now, uh, no. Finally, we would like to uh, say thank you very much while you shared you. your your opinions. It was it's very very interesting. And I hope uh, in the future somewhere we will meet personally some takeoffs, perhaps in Lebanon. But uh, we continue our speech uh, privately. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure.